What's going on everybody? This is DK Dynamite and tonight we're going to be talking about the early download for Season 5 Reloaded, a sneak peek of the new multiplayer content and some other surprise features. Definitely stay tuned. But before we jump into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, drop a like, and also as a reminder, we got plenty of brand new coverage going up over on Detonated.com, including plenty of articles breaking down our mid-Season 5 update, as well as plenty of tweets over on Detonated's Twitter every single hour. With that being said, in the background, enjoy some nice Ground War gameplay here in Modern Warfare 2. I think Terminal plays absolutely perfect inside of Ground War, and I cannot wait to see how it plays in 6v6 when we get the Faithful remaster inside of Modern Warfare 3 this fall. But yeah, haven't played too much of Al Malik Airport inside of Ground War from this game. Then again, I haven't played too much Ground War over the last couple of months, but whenever I do hop onto it, it's always an enjoyable experience. But with that, today I posted a separate video while I was streaming going over a bit of an overview of the Season 5 blog post, kind of just going through a gist of all the images and a little bit of the information, but nothing too much in depth. We didn't get a roadmap for Season 5 Reloaded, and as of right now, Season 4 Reloaded was the only update to get a roadmap. Map. I know in Cold War we got a roadmap for every beginning of a season and every mid-season. We'll have to wait and see if they end up doing a roadmap for every major title update inside of Modern Warfare 3. With that, we are two days away from launch of our mid-season 5 update, and I'm honestly surprised with how much is getting added in such a short amount of time. It's a ton to keep us waiting until the end of September for when Season 6 ends up beginning. With that, it was also confirmed in our blog post today that Season 6 is indeed going to be happening. So for those that were worried that Modern Warfare 2 was going to be just a five-season game, I know that wouldn't have made sense considering there's a Battle Pass time or suggesting otherwise, it is indeed going to be a six-season game like we saw with Modern Warfare 19 and even Black Ops Cold War. Vanguard was just a bit of an exception for obvious reasons, but yeah, I know at the beginning of this year, there was a lot of evidence to suggest that this was only a five-season game. They made certain statements like, oh, we're getting five raid episodes and a post-launch story told across five seasons. There was a lot of evidence to say that MW2 was a five-season game, but we now know that that's not going to be the case. Plans have clearly changed. But I want to start off with a mention of DRC Zone 1, a brand new 6v6 multiplayer map which takes place on the other side of Building 21. This is a map that I'm really looking forward to. And as it says here in the blog, it is focused on fast-paced combat and designed with several shortcuts and flanking routes, also built for frenetic action. From destroying the center's display of the DRC's triumphs to weaving through the laboratories and employee-only rooms, a well-rounded squad that communicates often and coordinates movements, just like in B-21, will have the best chance for success regardless of the mode. Essentially, our only way to play B-21 on every single weekday, not just the weekends, and I know it's not the exact same map, but I wonder if narrative-wise, right, with Coney taking over B-21 and stripping it from Shadow Company, I wonder if that's why we're finally seeing this map inside of multiplayer. I think they're trying to go with the narrative to help make it make sense to have a multiplayer experience on this location. But they did confirm a deep dive tactical guide to the map, which is likely going to come out tomorrow along with the gameplay trailer. I'll be live here on the channel in the morning once again to keep you guys posted with all new marketing we get for Season 5 Reloaded. We'll be talking about whatever footage they show us and going through the extensive images they end up providing for DRC Zone 1. But something really weird happened in this blog post where they go ahead and talk about gunfight snipers and I'm like, wait a second, gunfight snipers is already available to play. I put footage of it in my recent video and we know that armored gunfight is a mode that hasn't released yet but was confirmed in the original Season 5 roadmap. Not sure what happened here with this mistake. I'm not sure if they meant to maybe talk about armored gunfight, not gunfight snipers and they just forgot or had a miscommunication with which mode didn't actually release yet. We also have face-off 4v4 coming out, which also wasn't mentioned in the multiplayer section of this blog, so I wouldn't be shocked if this blog post does get amended and information is added to it either tomorrow or with the launch this Wednesday, because as of right now, we don't have a release date at all for Armored Gunfight or Face Off 4v4. One of those will likely be available right away day one with Season 5 Reloaded on August 30th, and another one of those modes is probably going to be saved for a week or two after the launch of the mid-season. I'll keep you guys posted with how the game modes are going to be released. But funny enough, right as the blog post dropped for our mid-season 5 update, PlayStation Size over on Twitter did report on update 1.24, which got added to the database. This is our mid-season 5 update. So the cool thing is that this is an update for all packs, but don't worry though, this is going to be an overall decrease for the overall game size. And for example, the full game from update 1.23 was 70 gigs, whereas in update 1.24, it's going to drop to 68 gigs. This doesn't mean you have to download 68 gigs worth of the game to actually decrease the file size. This is just what the game will be decreased to after downloading the patch for season 5 reloaded. To be more specific as well, multiplayer and co-op packs will be decreasing by around 700 megabytes to about a gig. And then for Warzone, it'll be dropping from 10.9 gigs to 7.7 .7 gigs. Again, it's unclear how big the overall patch is going to be for Reloaded. Campaign packs are apparently going to stay the same size as they were in 1.23. But looking at other Reloaded updates from previous seasons, Season 4 Reloaded sat at around 12 to 15 gigs. Season 3 Reloaded sat at around 11 gigs. Season 2 Reloaded was at around 12 to 14 gigs. And it's around the same for Season 1 Reloaded. So we're looking at about 
about 10 to 15 gigs we actually have to download. And then once you do that, like I said, the other packs in the game will have a decrease in file size. But in terms of when you can actually download this patch, don't be surprised if the preload does pop up on PS4 and PS5 later tonight or early tomorrow, maybe tomorrow evening by the latest, and then it'll become installable as the Season 5 Reloaded update does begin on Wednesday, August 30th at 9 a.m. Pacific, 11 o'clock Central, 12 o'clock Eastern. Those will also be the same times when the update does pop up for Xbox and PC, because again, only PS4 and PS5 get the preloads for every major Call of Duty update. But on top of that, some brand new features were announced in today's blog post, which I wanted to go a little bit more in depth with in this video. This could drastically impact how lobby this banning works and how SBMM works inside of multiplayer, which will in turn likely also be something we see changed in Modern Warfare 3 multiplayer this fall. So this is something that I wish would have been in the game since day one, but better late than never, right? So as they went ahead and confirmed here, a play again option is coming to multiplayer. So yes, that was obviously already in Warzone, but this is now coming to multiplayer. After each match, all players or specifically solo players and designated party leaders on the same team can opt to stick together for the next match. So that can certainly change how lobby disbanding affects everybody's multiplayer experiences. Although you can't guarantee you'll get the same enemies again, I know there is a slight chance now that you could stay with the same lobby overall. They updated that, I think, in like season two or season three. You could at least stay with the same teammates you had, which again, if you had a good experience with them and you guys worked well as a team, you guys made some new friends, without having to add them as a friend right away, you could at least stay in the same lobby as them, which in turn could improve your overall flow in multiplayer moving forward, being able to ensure that if you get put against a sweaty team during your next match, you at least have those reliable teammates that you just met a couple of minutes ago. But then the other feature, right, Friend Recommender, is built for those looking to find new squad mates. It works in two different ways. One is suggesting friends of friends, a helpful feature for the whole squad to get connected with one another. And then the Friend Recommender overall is built on a brand new dynamic system that suggests new friends to play with. So it's algorithmic and is different from what we've seen before inside of any other COD, really. So whether it is finding someone who enjoys the same game modes, plays at similar times, or are part of the same social group, the Friend Recommender suggests potential new friends as well has to provide explanations for why it is recommended that you play with a certain individual person. And I think that's fantastic for those that might not have had luck in my Discord server. And again, that's probably hard because in my Discord server, everyone's looking to play, whether it's raids, whether it's Warzone, MP, there's always people to play with there. But for some reason, if you guys had trouble finding folks in there because of time zones, this feature sounds great. And it's something that will be detailed more with the reloaded pass notes that are dropping this upcoming Wednesday. But if you guys are like, wait, how does this affect SBMM at all? Like I said, if you're able to continuously find new ways to make solid friendships or to stick with the same people that you played well with in your last match, that will overall just decrease the frustration people have with going up against sweaty enemy teams if they're playing solo or just one other person. Yeah, you might still get match made with people that are around your skill level, sure, but if you're with reliable people that you can trust, it'll at least make that gameplay that much better and being able to find new ways to make new friends aside from just joining Discord servers or commenting on random videos and streams, still do that, but having a new way built into the game to find some reliable people, that's gonna really improve multiplayer altogether and I'm pretty positive that features like that will be available available day one inside of Mono Warfare 3. Now I want to end this video by talking about a bit of a preview for what to expect in Season 5 Reloaded's patch notes. First off, I'm aware of a major issue with rank. The people out there are trying to do a melee attack and it's for some reason putting a throwing knife in your hand, which would mean that you're one tapping any enemy that you hit with that throwing knife. It's a very odd bug that I'm sure developers are fully aware of. They have acknowledged it before. And on top of that, over for rank play on the Trello board, they confirmed they are investigating reports. Some players did not receive their end of skill division operator skins. So looking at the Trello board can give us a bit of an idea of what should be expected to be fixed in the next title update. In terms of Warzone specifically, though, for all platforms, they have mentioned stat tracking. They're investigating an issue that is resulting in an inflated, inaccurate number of track eliminations represented in the global combat stats. They then mentioned Plunder and how they're investigating a really weird issue with the mode. I believe it is playable right now, but there was a reason that they removed it prematurely last week. They've since fixed it, but are probably still investigating to make sure that doesn't happen again with whatever XP exploit was found by the community. And then for all platforms, the buyback cost. They're investigating an issue causing buybacks to incorrectly cost $4,000. They're also aware of an issue where the game may crash in split screen and are actively investigating that. Also an issue impacting PlayStation users that can cause the game to crash when resuming a mission in single player while offline. A fix is incoming, but this can be resolved by using mission select first. They're also aware of an issue where some Xbox players are not receiving MW3 pre-order incentive rewards and they're working on a fix right now. So don't worry, you didn't get gypped off your pre-order. You'll be getting those rewards momentarily. They also 
mentioned street panels. They have disabled street panels that forecast incoming fog in Vondel while we investigate a related crash. One of the cooler new features in Vondel that hopefully does get fixed relatively soon. I always enjoy looking at that. But they're also aware of an issue where utility tunnel entrances at Rohan Oil and Almazra are becoming inaccessible to the player. But then for DMZ, they confirm they are investigating an issue where some players are unable to barter for a special plate carrier at specific buy stations. That's pretty frustrating. Also a problem where some players are spawning into DMZ without weapons when they have selected blueprint weapons in their loadout. That's been an issue for quite a while that hopefully finally gets ironed out with Season 5 Reloaded and hopefully we never see that again. But that is about it. This has been DK Dynamite. Leave your thoughts down below in the comment section. What are your thoughts on the early download for Season 5 Reloaded? What are your thoughts on the multiplayer specific content and the brand new social features? Really hope you've enjoyed and peace out everybody. Thank you.